again and welcome to another step-by-step -step beginners tutorial on how to make this gorgeous resin cake stand and this week we're playing with color and experimenting on how to mix micas to create any shade that you'd like in this particular case this gorgeous shade of jade So this week's inspiration comes from these two Fabergé eggs that I have that are jade in color. They're two different jade tones and I really wanted to mimic them. They were my inspiration. But as you can see, I didn't quite have the exact shade of mica necessary. So what I've done in that cup that you can see there is mixed two to three different shades of mica until I've kind of achieved what I consider matching those eggs. I've listed all the materials that I've used and the color shades and tones down below in the description box under this video, so do check that out. I'm also using some gold glass shards in the center. I thought it went really well with this jade tone. So I've pre-mixed my resin and in that cup I have about 550 grams, which is about 20 ounces of uh, clear resin. And I am going to fill about half a cup full um, off resin into that jade color that I've mixed up. I have some white mica powder and in that cup I have two teaspoons of the gold glass shards and about a tablespoon of resin and I have some sage glow which is the iridescent color And I like to put this in the center of my pieces, surrounding the glitters first. I think it gives a nice little pop. So we'll mix this thoroughly. And again, you want to avoid any lumps because they will float to the surface and it isn't a very good look. So in this case I'm mixing a little bit more because I want it to be somewhat transparent but with just that little bit of iridescent glow to it. And of course I'll need enough for those three moulds. So let's get started by pouring a nice ring around the outer rim of all three of these moulds in your main color, in this case the jade. And if in general you're not sure if you'll have enough of this main color, just put a little rim down on each and you can always add some more after. Now we're going to add some of that white and just a little thin rim touching the jade. So as you can see, I haven't made much of this white color. It was about a quarter of a cup. Then I'm taking some of that uh, gold glow and I'm going to attempt to pour it in, but then you'll see it's much easier using a spoon So with the leftovers, I am using one of these crystal cluster molds by Art for Start. And I am just filling a little bit of the gold glow at the bottom of each of these little clusters.
give it a little squeeze and just tap it to get rid of some of the air because you can't really get your heat gun down there to get rid of the bubbles. So I like to do it this way and I don't actually own one of those vacuum chamber machines and I know that that's the best way of getting air out. So I have found that if you wait until the end of a pour, most of the bubbles have risen out of the cups and you'll get less bubbles in your crystals. So I'm just adding some clear transparent resin, untinted, right on the top until it reaches the top. And at this point, if you spot any bubbles, just zap it quickly with your heat gun. And into this, I'm just pouring clear transparent resin, untinted, until the molds fill up to the top. So I'm looking from the side to see the actual level. And if it's not quite up to the top, I'll keep adding some clear. And then just let that sit for about 10 minutes or so. And then you can use your heat gun on low to burst any surface bubbles. Just to use up all of the white resin mix that we have and I'm not trying to achieve a flower effect at all but I did want some sort of movement in the middle and you can very faintly see this in the final result so it's an interesting effect and I could have just poured it straight in but I thought we could have a little fun so I'm going all the way around on all three of these and I'm just very generally creating some long oval shapes just in the center and that's the uh, pure white And so I've done the same process for the larger plate and I'm just finishing off the smallest plate. And you can see with the other two, they're already starting to merge together. It's not quite a flower, but it gives a little interesting effect. So now I'm adding a large spoonful of the glass, gold glass shards into the center of each of these plates. And it's up to you, it's your design. You can add as little or as much as you like. And for some final embellishment, I am using some brass alcohol ink from Jacquard Pinata. I have got either a little toothpick or a little small wooden stick. I'm pouring a little bit out just into the lid. And you will need a clean cloth or a wet wipe for this effect to wipe off before each dip. So just like the previous video, I am dipping it in halfway. I don't want to scratch the bottom of the silicone mold. So I'm being quite careful. And between each dip, I am just cleaning it off so that you clean off any resin. And you can do as many of these rings as you like. I've just done one, but it's up to you. It's your design. You could even do them in a different color if you liked. If, for example, you had some silver shards in the center, you could do this in silver. And once again, if you see the previous video when I did this in the quartz white, I did it this particular technique in silver. 
using silver alcohol ink and it looked really great. And because this dries into the resin, it doesn't scratch off and it doesn't flake off. So this is a great way of making those geode agate rings without having to do a top coat after. And it's quite nice if some of these areas are a bit thicker than others. It just all adds to the effect. So this is the last one and I'm just deciding where I would like that ring to go. And I quite like it jagged so I am swirling my stick as I go around. And in fact I'm trying to follow the jagged edges of the actual mould. Just so it's kind of consistent. And then you want to let these dry for an entire week. And the reason is you want a full cure rather than an initial cure. And that's so that they don't bend or sag once they have the fixings on them. So leave them patiently for a whole week and then you can unmold them. So I'm going to start by unmolding these gorgeous crystal clusters that I've made and you can tell that lovely two-tone effect. It's all reversed so all of that lovely gold glow that we've added to the bottom of the mold is now on the top of the tips of the crystals and it just looks gorgeous and it matches perfectly um, with those plates because you've made the same batch of resin and color at the same time as you've done your plates. And these are for decoration at the end. Um, I actually had the idea of doing them in the center where the actual gold is surrounded by the stick and you'll see at the end what I mean. It's just an extra bit of bling. It's not an absolute requirement. I do like my crystals so I add them in whenever I can. And to unmold these crystals, this is actually the same evening, so about 12 hours, or maybe a little bit less. And it's very easy to unmold these when you don't wait the full cure, when they're still bendy, they come out much easier. So this, in fact, is a week later. I've let it sit flat, and I've not touched it at all. And now I'm simply pulling down the sides and they seem to have come out of the center all on their own. Out it pops and there's that lovely hole there, all ready for your fixings later on. However, if you didn't have this type of mold and your mold doesn't have a center hole in it, resin is really easy to drill into. So don't hesitate to try it on an old scrap piece and you'll see how easy it is to drill in and it le really leaves a very clean, sharp edge. So there's number two and that came off pretty painlessly and I just love the transparent effect um, that doing that lovely gold glow in the center gave because it mixed with the white and then the jade green kind of flowed on top of that white which flowed on top of that gold glow and just left the lovely gold shards in the middle poking through. So I was pretty pleased with that. And then this is the largest of all the plates and it is important to wipe them down maybe with a wet rag or just wash them under the sink before you reuse them and then let them dry completely and that's just a little tip so there are two sides to this and I couldn't actually decide which one I like the best so I am going to put the fixings and I am going to use both sides and I'll show you both sides so you can see how gorgeous those crystals look just in the middle and you can just imagine the gold fixings just sticking through and wrapping around it. And it doesn't take up too much room on the plate, so you can still put your cakes and your chocolates or whatever it is you're putting on. So for this particular piece, I am using some gold. 
and it comes in a liquid form and I will list it down for you down below this particular brand that I used I didn't find it exceptional in the color tone but it was the only one that I had left and it did need two coats so a good two coats let it dry properly and then do a second coat on the top and that makes it pop a little more so I have very delicately used the tip of the brush to do the top gilding and this requires a lot of patience and if you make any mistakes just get yourself a q-tip and dip it in some acetone and that will wipe right off so as you can see you can choose either side that you prefer I'm going to go for this side today I like the way the glitter has fallen down to the bottom but obviously you could choose that side or that side so this kit came with the necessary washers and a screw so there's two types of washers there is the foam rubber washers like this and then there are three types of metal washers one is larger and the other two are a little smaller this larger one is for the main base so the bottom layer and then these two are for the other two layers and it also comes with the handle and two metal sticks if you wanted on the larger base which is the bottom layer you could add these transparent diamonds that I've bought and I've listed everything down below for you in the description box you could put four and just a little dab of some super glue but today I'm not going to do that in case I change my mind and I prefer this side so to start off with you can take a washer and the washer always goes down first to protect the resin then you place the largest of the metal washer followed by the screw hold it with your finger and turn it around take one of the sticks and the flat end of the stick and you twist it into place you do the same process for the other two you take the metal washer first then the foam washer the second layer followed by another foam washer and then the other stick and if you wanted if you only wanted two layers so two rows you could replace that stick by the handle and then you have a two layered cake stand So once again, the metal washer for the final layer, followed by a rubber washer, the last plate, and a foam washer, and then the handle. Twist it all into place, holding the bottom layers, the middle layer, until it no longer turns, and then just check that it's level and straight, and if it's not, just turn it a little bit and keep twisting and there you go so sometimes it's nice to add a little embellishment and you could put those crystal clusters that we made and just find a position that suits it perhaps the bigger one would look better at the bottom and you can just secure it in place with a little super glue stuck to the bottom and then gently placed around you'll have to do it around the base there and that one fits very snugly there you could even put another one there and that just gives it a little pizzazz and some bling and who doesn't like bling So then the next day, of course, I decided to turn it around and uh, see what it would look like on the other side. So I've reversed the whole process that you've just seen 
and this is the result of it being on the other side. And it's exactly the same process. You put one of the metal washers followed by a rubber washer, the plate, another rubber on the top, and then the stick, and you keep going until you get to the end. Let me know down in the comments below which you prefer. Side A, which is the first one I showed you, or side B, this side. 